future table. Um, this is a, a little piece of that mahogany, and I'm using it just as a template. Um, I, I'll show you this in a minute, but basically I've got this set up exactly the way I mentioned in the last video. What we're going to do here, um, I, I've measured this off from the seat because the seat is level, uh, level with the rest of the hull. And I measured, you know, from, you know, front and back on this up to the edge of the table. And then I measured out front here. And so what I come up with is, and real simple, um, the table leg, the bottom, the table leg has to meet the bottom edge of the table at uh, 24 and 3 quarters. At 24 and 3 quarters. And when you sit at this thing, it's perfect height. Just absolutely perfect. I'm going to narrow this table a little bit because I want to be able to uh, have it so that it lands properly on the ledge back there. I'll show you how I've got that set up in a minute. Um, it's, right now, those are just blocks clamped on. Uh, but anyway, I uh, think this is going to work. I think this is going to work. That's going to give me my next project at home. And that's the whole idea is to have um, the next project lined up so that when I go home to Vermont, I'm working on it. I've got the next one that is well underway. And uh, by the time I get down here next time, then I'll have another little piece of this stuff all done up. In other words, more... Uh, more of my interior woodwork and finish off and there's you know just just like I did with these um, uh, up at home all this was done in Vermont and brought down here and put on the boat so that's what our, that's our next project get the table done so here we are uh, and we're finally ready for the big lamination this is for the table down in my uh, down in the cabin of little girl and this is the last piece large enough uh, of my really beautiful mahogany uh, that I have left to do the table. So anyway, what I've got here is a setup. I'm gonna, this is going to be laminated. This, uh, you see down this bottom half inch here is plywood. And then on top is the uh, beautiful mahogany ply. I'm not going to do the, uh, the flame figure that I did with the doors on the interior. This time we're just going to do the plain mahogany which is the, the flip side of it. There is a flame on the back side of this. I, I, I think there's uh, just going to be too much if I do another flame. So anyway, we're going to do the plain mahogany this time. And I've set this up to where um, it's, it's going to be ready to glue shortly. This is, this is all very carefully laid out. Um, where you've got this big of a, a space, you, I'm not only going to be gluing very, very heavily all down underneath here uh, between the the uh, the mahogany and, and the plywood below the, with a really heavy layer, but in order to do that, you've got to be able to compress the, uh, you know, and make sure that everything contacts. Well, that's why these rails are here. I, I cut these exactly the right size, and these, uh, these little... Uh, gluing blocks as it were are down here underneath them and so what happens is I'm going to be using some um, some bar clamps on each end uh, a total of four bar clamps two here and two down here and and those together will uh, take, take and compress that the center of this down uh, to, to where it's got a really good gluing contact the other thing I did was cut the uh, plywood just barely wide of the of the mahogany and so that I can get all my clamps along the edges here uh, you know all the way up through and I've got enough clamps uh, down on this end I've got a little bit of bowing that's going on going on with the, the plywood underneath here that's why there's this mahogany uh, piece that's right here so a long very very straight solid mahogany piece and I'm going to be using that to, to clamp the you know the mahogany down onto actually the whole idea is to pull the, the plywood up into the mahogany so that everything is nice and flat and level and this will keep it flat and level because it's a good straight piece and then all along the edges i'm going to come in here with uh, some of the scissor clamps as you see there but also uh you know i've got a whole a bunch of uh, regular c clamps that i'm going to be doing all along the edges and so forth it's going to be a big project. I hate doing something this big. One of the problems you have when you're doing a glue down like this is that the the top piece, as you're gluing, wants to skate. In other words, it's, it's like you've got this, this slick of, of glue between them, and it doesn't want to stay in one place. 
And so what I'm going to do, I've decided because uh, this is going to be narrower than it is. Okay, this is this is a full oh, almost 19 inches wide here, and I'm going to cut it down to about 17 to 17 and a half. With the edges on it, it's going to be just about the right size for the width of the table. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm not, I'm actually going to nail, uh, you know, to, to put some little nails in all along, you know, to to absolutely completely line everything up. Uh, maybe all, all I need is like four, one in each corner, uh, because those edges are going to get cut off anyway when I, when I do the, the final trim down for the size of the table. So anyway, uh, the whole idea is get the glue on, put the nails in, make sure that everything is positioned right, on, and uh, just then just let it sit and drip, because I'm planning to put a very, very heavy gluing onto the, the plywood and that I'm going to be gluing the mahogany down onto. This time I'm going to be using this. It's, it's a, the, the even better, newer version of Type Bond. I've been using Type Bond forever. But this is Type Bond 2. It's a premium wood glue. It's uh, It has a, a, a water resistancy. In other words, it's not just... Uh, by the way, Type Bond is just an awesome glue. Very, very powerful. Uh, but but this stuff actually is, is water resistant uh, and will resi resist any kind of moisture uh, ever, ever getting in between the... Uh, uh, the mahogany and the plywood that it's being laminated to. When I get all done with this, uh, what I've got is some really nice edge molding uh, that is going to go all around the outside. I mean, I'm going to do a, a, a 45 degree up in the uh, up in the both corners, but I'm going to have a, an edge molding that comes along uh, each, you know, along each of the sides and along the end, and that's going to uh, uh, have a nice finishing touch. Uh, and also be very practical because if you're out on the water and you get any kind of uh, a wave movement or anything, it's going to keep things from sl from sliding off the table. So that's where we're at for right now. And now I have a lot of work to do to get all this set up, get all the glue down, and get all my blocks in place and do the clamping. So thanks for sticking with me. That's a good introduction. Uh, I got this all done. Um, I'll tell you what, the best thing I did right at the very start was to put in these little nails, uh, positioning nails. And if you're doing this kind of a thing, especially with a, a, a large lamination, definitely get everything lined up before any glue goes down. Make sure that you got to know exactly where everything is going to line up perfectly. Put your nails in so that you, the holes are already there with, uh, and, and then pull the nails back out. And then uh, get all your glue down. By the way, when in doing the glue, remember, not only are you putting down lots and lots and lots of glue, but use a, a large spatula like this to spread it so that you get every single centimeter of the entire surface of, of your glue down area, the, of the, in this case plywood, is completely, totally covered with glue. Uh, once that was done, um, then it was a fairly simple matter. I, I took my new mahogany and put it on top of he got everything lined up as a matter of fact you see right over oh wait a minute i moved it i moved it oh here it is okay it's back over on this side because so i moved this around after i started gluing there's one of those little nails but see this mark right here right there okay both on the plywood and on the mahogany that's my alignment mark and so i, I got that lined up i put the nail in Moved over to this side, put that nail in, and basically I got uh, nails in all four corners after the glue was down. You know, all the nails went back in exactly the same holes. Everything was exactly lined up the way it needed to be. And then it became actually pretty easy uh, to line up these rails on top of the gluing blocks and uh, use my big old bar clamps, which are fantastic because you got a lot of clamp down power with those things. So anyway, I got, got that all done, which compressed the center of it. And then I came along the outside and over on this side, I did it traditionally with a smaller clamps. Okay. And then I realized I might be running out of clamps. So I said, you know what? I got an idea. I went and cut literally a two by four, 22 inches long, which is the length of the glue up. And I put that down here and I put one C-clamp in the middle of it, and because of the tremendous rigidity and the clamping power of the big old uh, bar clamp, I mean, look at it. Perfect. You got glue coming out end to end on this thing. Matter of fact, I was having to clean up glue a minute ago to keep it from going on the carpet. Uh, so anyway, <laughs> boy, 
Uh, this was easy. Oh, easier. Let's put it that way. A lot easier than the last time. You see, I got good glue coming out here. Uh, this just shows that uh, we've got good compression all the way around. It's on the same end. Uh, same thing on this end. Yeah, sorry, I'll kill myself here. I don't know if you can see that, but you got good uh, glue coming out all along the edge there. It basically, we got a good lamination here. And uh, this stays in the clamps overnight. And in the morning, uh, it all comes off and we can just start working on all of the uh, finessing of everything. Cutting it to size, cutting the, the lamination to size the way we want it. And sanding everything out and uh, then uh, then the uh, molding come, uh, goes on and, uh, and then ultimately the, uh, the staining and the varnishing. This time, instead of varnishing with regular old marine glue, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to go ahead and use a, a nice uh, Minwax urethane, polyurethane varnish uh, because it's a table. Okay, and it'll look nice and it'll have some durability to it that uh, you don't have to worry about scratching it or anything because it's marine varnish. We'll go, just use a polyurethane on it and, and uh, seal it up real well. So anyway, it should be fun. I'm looking forward to it. Then after this is all done, then I'm going to work on the table leg and we'll talk about that later. Back on the captain's table here. Um, this is the factory edge uh, right here, um, and I glue, glue this uh, mahogany up to the plywood so that it's nice and flush. This is nice and clean right here. Uh, and what I just did, I, I went ahead and ripped this edge, and uh, this this came out really nice. This is nice, clean. I made sure that my blade was plumb. Uh, first, that's the very first thing I did, so that I've got a very straight square edge to the uh, to the top and bottom of the table. So that's done. I've been trying to decide what width to do this, but after cutting that, uh, I think I'm just going to go ahead and make it 18 wide. Uh, it's going to give a little bit of uh, you'll see that that's actually already see I already marked it right there. There's 18 right there, so. I may just do 18. Uh, I'd be tempted to go a little wider because I have probably another half inch I could give it. But, you know, I think 18 is going to be wide enough. Um, in that tiny cabin, you don't have a whole lot of room uh, on either side. So, um, anyway, I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to rip it to 18. And then I think I'm going to round it off. This is it can go 21 out here. In other words, a, t a total depth. This would be this is where the companionway, where it meets up with the companionway right here. And then your total length going back into the cabin, or actually forward into the cabin, would be 21 inches. Um, if I wanted to be, you know, real nice and round about it, I'd go 18 and 20. But um, I think I may give it that extra inch. Uh, you're not going to be able to get up from the table anyway without taking the table down. It's, you know, the way that this is set up is that I'm going to have it, uh, you know, when you get ready to eat, all your food is going to be on, on your two uh, areas there where your stove is and where your sink is. And you sit down, you set up your table, you get your food, and you just sit there and eat. Okay, that's, that's going to be the way of it. So, um, uh, I don't know. Anyway, it, it's, it's not going to make a whole lot of difference whether I take off that inch or not. So, uh, decisions, decisions. But anyway, getting ready to rip this. I'm really anxious to move on. I've got the, I've got the new molding all ready to go on to this as soon as I get this ripped. Um, and uh, just need to go up to Dana's house and use his uh, his cutoff saw, which is extremely precise on giving a 45 degree angle. And uh, once I get that done, uh, I can go ahead and, and get the uh, get the molding on this, and then stain it and urethane it, and the table will be ready to take to the Cape. Um, when I want to do moldings. I'll tell you what, thank you Dana very much. This this wonderful chop saw that he's got here is so incredibly accurate. Uh, every time I cut a piece of molding I know it's going to be dead on and fit like a glove. So 
Anyway, my thanks to Dana for, uh, yeah, basically, he lets me just come and use this anytime I want, whether he's here or not, and uh, really appreciate it. It's a member of the uh, Lord's Church, the Church of Christ here in the, in the area, and uh, just really appreciate his uh, willingness to come and let me use his equipment here. So anyway, this is so cool. I mean, y'all, you got. I'm sure everybody already knows how to do that. All you got to do is loosen that, and uh, this clicks right on over. And when that locks in, right there, and you can't see it down in there. But anyway, when that locks in on 45, just turn this down. And when you do that, when you do that cut, it's dead on. And then vice versa, you loosen this, go back to the 90 if you want to do a straight cut off, or go back over to this 45. Ugh, awesome, awesome piece of equipment. Someday, <laughs> someday maybe I'll have one of these. But uh, in the meantime, Dana's just very gracious and lets me use this equipment. So anyway, that's how I just cut all my molding and uh, ready to go home. Got everything cut and uh, ready to go on the captain's table. 37 degree morning in Vermont. Uh, by the way, it's, uh, what is it? April 21st. <laughs> We're still freezing last night. Anyway, whatever. Here's the captain's table. I uh, got the uh, got the molding on last night. Um, it's not done by any means, but this is the last little video section I'm going to do uh, before doing all the the staining and the urethane and all this kind of stuff. But anyway, the molding came out great. I am going to go ahead and get a, um, a I think a regular kitchen caulking and run a bead of caulking around the inside of the the lip on this so that. Uh, no water, and, you know, by the way, it's all glued down and everything, but I, I just want to make sure that uh, nothing gets down in behind the molding and so forth. So anyway, next stop, finish work. After this morning, I decided I was going to tackle this. Um, back on the captain's table here, I don't know if you noticed in the video just preceding this, that uh, there was a lump. A right, and I can't even see it now. <laughs> okay, uh, I can almost feel it. It's, I think it's right in there somewhere. Anyway, what happened is that I drove a nail, uh, one of the tiny finish nails. It's only an inch long. Uh, about uh, two, it was just too shallow, uh, as far as coming up on the side of the molding here. And it raised uh, the grain here. It, well, raised the top layer of the the uh, of the plywood. And I said, I'm not going to do that. I mean, it was obvious. You could see it. Matter of fact, if you look at the early part of the video, you can see it. So what I did, uh, and I didn't want to do it, but I, I'm I'm not going to let that lay. And so what I did, I took my knife, and I very carefully cut out around. I already had. Uh, uh, some caulking in there to, you know, to finish it off. I meant uh, some spackle. And I dug it out and dug it out around it enough to where I could actually get this tiny uh, screwdriver in underneath the edge of a finish nail. And here it is, by the way. This is a stupid little culprit that, that did it to me. Um, anyway, got it in underneath the edge of that finish nail and it very obligingly lifted out just by prying it. And uh, I use, a, use my... Uh, uh, multi-tool here uh, to grab it and pull it on out and there it went I mean so that got that out of the way well now I've got a void in there and I still have a lump up here so what you do I took the side of this uh, tack hammer and just laid it on here and hammered very gently you know, well not gently kind of decisively with a full-size hammer and until it laid down and, and now it's gone I, I sanded that out and so help me, I defy you to figure out where it used to be, because it's gone. Um, I, I can see it, but I'm not going to tell you where it is. <laughs> anyway, it worked, it worked. The only bad thing of the whole thing is that now over on this side, uh, I've got that. And it's just a bit of spackle that's in there compared to that, which would have been a nail hole anyway. You know what? I will gladly sacrifice, and by the time you get your stain on and your urethane and everything, who's going to care? It's got, that's going to be sanded a little bit more. But the beauty is, the lump is gone, you know, the table is nice and flat, there's no 
uh, no obvious flaws in the situation right now. And so, okay, well, <laughs> it was it was worth the doing, even if I have to sacrifice and deal with that little bit of a uh, a bigger boo boo area there where I had to put some more spackle in. So here we are again. Seems like I've done this before, but uh, doing the varnishing on the captain's table. Um, I'm using this time because I got a comment on it when I was on the uh, Seafarer website. Um, why am I using gloss? And because uh, all the uh, all the beautiful mahogany I've put into the boat so far has all been uh, Captain Spar Euro, uh, not Euro thing, excuse me, ta Captain Spar varnish, um, and it's all been gloss. Uh, I never gave it half a thought, frankly. And uh, but then somebody said, well, you know, they like, uh, they thought I had to put satin on it, and so I said, okay. So I went and researched. I did a lot of looking into it, seeing what guys you know, who own sailboats, what are their thoughts about um, gloss varnish versus uh, satin, and some guys even want to take and strip it all off, and and that's fine. I mean, this that's their preference strip it all off, and do uh, nothing but oil. In other words, a, a nice oil finish, a hand rubbed oil finish. And I'll tell you what, I've done hand rubbed oil finish a lot of work, but man, it is pretty. There's no doubt about it. It doesn't have a high sheen that uh, your gloss varnishes do. And uh, my main thing here, as far as this particular piece is concerned, I, I just wanted to go ahead and use urethane because of its durability, and so I didn't really care if it was if it was satin or if it was gloss, and so I've gone ahead and, and uh, this time uh, the underside of this has already been done. By the way, the underside of this uh, table has been done with uh, high gloss polyurethane. Uh, I had a whole can, uh, old old can. Let me. Just, I don't even know how old this is. I had an old can of Helmsman Spar Urethane, and man, uh, <laughs> it's been around a long time, but it was still good. It was still completely intact. I said, well, I'm using that up. I may not use it on the tabletop, but there's no sense in it going to waste, so I very carefully uh, got everything sanded out and stained down below uh, underneath the, the table here and gave it uh, two coats initially, may do another one later, of... Uh, Helmsman Spar Urethane High Gloss, and uh, uh, it, you know, I'll tell you what, I was, I was surprised after all these years, that stuff dried beautifully. I had it on the back porch. We finally have an actual spring day outside. This is uh, Sunday, uh, the 22nd of April. We haven't had spring yet. This is the first real spring day we've had. And it is beautiful out there. It's getting a little cool now. That's why I came inside with the uh, when I when I moved to the top side of the uh, um, you know the table here. So anyway, I'm pretty much all done with this uh, for first coat. One of the things I, I do, did find with regard to the satin is that man, it is really finicky. You got to stay right on top of it. I'm glad I got these lights right over the top of this when you're when you're putting it on because it, it wants to bubble on you, and, and you've got to be really very carefully drag your, uh, and I always use a foam brush, I, I really like foam. Um, anyway, very carefully, slowly, uh, you know, drag your, your foam brush, and, and that way you are basically tr almost eliminating the, the bubbles before they happen. Uh, it's, it's not a definite, anyway, I'm going back over and just touching some areas that I can see and kind of making smoothing the coat and it, it, it's it's taking plenty long to dry and that's good I'm really glad I like it when varnishes take a little long I love varnishing it's my thing but I love it when they stay nice and fresh for a while because that way you can go back over it and smooth everything and and just get it looking really fine and then you stand back and don't mess with it. <laughs> anyway, so this is done uh, for the first coat. And I think it's going to come out great. Um, uh, going to be a pretty pretty uh, captain's table. Uh, we'll work about, uh, about 
four more coats at least since we're doing satin and, uh, and probably do at least four or five coats here on the top side. Uh, down below, we may do one more coat of the, the gloss. Um, I was really impressed with how well that old Holmesman uh, not only laid down the varnish and, and gave a good coat, but uh, when you got the second coat on there, man, it, it looked like it was it was done. I mean, like it had it was a good solid uh, gloss finish and it ain't going nowhere. So anyway, we'll come back to this later, but uh, wanted to get in one more segment. I think for this video, what we're going to do is we're going to Call it quits for this as video, and I'll finish this up with a theme song going out and uh, just to have nothing but uh, pictures of everything finished up with all the varnish and so on and so forth. So, anyway, uh, thanks for coming by Restoring Little Girl, and really uh, have enjoyed doing this. Uh, been kind of fun doing this project. It's, it's kind of maybe, maybe <laughs> the last of my, you know, mahogany and uh, interior. Uh, refit for the winter uh, because since we're getting into spring I need to get on the on the ball here um, my brother called me and he's picking up a gallon of um, ablative bottom paint uh, they're on sale right now at uh, West Marine and uh, $99 and so he's picking that up uh, today down on the Cape and I'll pay him when I get down there and I think we're ready to move on start getting some outside stuff done not just inside so. Anyway, thanks for stopping by uh, Restoring Little Girl. Uh, just come on back, uh, keep watching the videos, uh, give us a thumbs up. I uh, really enjoy doing my work. Hey, take care. Bye.